So we arrived to work on this rooftop unit heat pump, and as you can see, it is frozen solid. Um, my partner here, he is taking the screwdriver to try to scrape off some of the ice around the port so that we could possibly add some uh, refrigerant if it's low on refrigerant. So that's what he's doing right here. So let me educate you a little bit. This is mainly for the novices or beginners that are trying to get into HVAC or just trying to understand why this happens. As you can see, this has been like this for a while. So let me start by saying if your heat pump is frozen and you're freaking out, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. It tends to happen in the wintertime, whether it's on a commercial building like this one or at your home on your outside condenser. There's usually nothing wrong with it, so don't be scared. There may just be something that needs to be addressed. So heat pumps, they can freeze up in cold weather, and it's critical to know what to do if this does happen. It's essential to understand that heat pumps, what they do is they transfer heat from one area to another for the purposes of heating and cooling. They draw the heat energy from the outside air throughout the colder months and they bring that heat energy inside to heat your home or your business. Believe it or not, even at negative 460 degrees, there is still heat in the air. Mind blowing, right? And to cool you off in the summertime, what the heat pump does is it takes the energy from inside your home and releases it back outside. Look at how covered this, my vacuum line or my suction line is. Um, it's like frozen solid. I mean, it's unit's actually kicking on, but it's still not functioning right. It's not going into defrost mode, which I'll get into in a little bit. So this is a package unit, meaning it has a condenser and an evaporator coil in one unit. So this is my field piece scale. You always want to use a scale when you're trying to determine because um, you want to know how much uh, refrigerant you're putting in and how much you're taking out when you're working on these units. So this is R22 and it's actually being phased out. But anyway, we're going to be putting some of this into this unit to see if we can add any refrigerant to the unit itself. Typically in residential units, what you'll do is you'll have a heat pump that consists of an outdoor condenser and an indoor air handler, typically where your furnace is connected in most homes. These are called split systems. So if you ever hear that term, that's generally what they're talking about. The outdoor heat pump condensing unit, what it does is it circulates refrigeration like a central air conditioner. Refrigerant is a chemical compound, and what it does is it absorbs heat, making heat transfer possible. And as you can see here, he's taken off the, the valves to the Schrader valves, and this one is so frozen on, he had to use a, uh, some pliers just to, to get it loose. And he's getting ready to get his gauges and see what his pressures look like and prob potentially add a little bit of Freon. Refrigerant is a chemical compound that absorbs heat. And what it does is it makes heat transfer possible due to the reversing valve that's built into these units. A heat pump can also reverse the flow of the refrigerant. So basically what it's doing is it's serving two purposes, cooling in the summertime and heating in the wintertime. So in heating mode, the refrigerant in the outdoor condenser portion of your unit, it absorbs the heat energy from the outside air. Then the refrigerant is pressurized and heated to a vapor. Remember, when something's under high pressure, it becomes a higher temperature. When it's under low pressure, it becomes a lower temperature. So clearly this is under low pressure because you can see the temperature so low that this line, these lines are frozen solid. But anyway, continuing, so the next, the compressor pushes the refrigerant into the inside air handler in the case of a residential unit, but in this case, the the inside air handler is built inside the unit because it's a package unit. And what happens is the evaporator inside this unit, then vaporized refrigerant flows to the indoor unit coil, or in this case, the evaporator coil. The cold air is blown over the coil, and what happens is it absorbs the heat from the refrigerant. 
So as the heat leaves the refrigerant, the refrigerant turns back into a liquid and circulates back to the outdoor unit, hence why this is frozen. So this is frozen, as you can see, because as, as, as I just said, as it leaves the refrigerant, as the heat leaves the refrigerant, the refrigerant turns back into a liquid. So what does liquid do? It starts to condensate. And when it starts to condensate, like if you have a glass of water on a hot day, you'll see the outside of the glass look like it's sweating, water is dripping a little bit. That's condensation. And that condensation starts to freeze. That's what you're seeing here in this video. So here, looking at our pressures, um, looks like we're getting about um, 125 pounds on the hot side, which is my red line right here, and then my suction line, which is my blue line. We're getting very little, maybe five, ten pounds of pressure, maybe. So there's clearly something wrong. I'm not 100% sure yet if it's low on Freon, but we're probably going to add a little bit anyway. I I saw a pair. So what you see me doing here is I am trying to get the compressor bypass so that we can get it to run because if we can get it running maybe we can get the refrigerant running through the system enough to probably melt this ice but hence this is another problem because the uh, unit's not even allowing me to bypass it by connecting these two wires together so this is becoming kind of a pain so getting back to what i was saying when temperatures drop below 32 degrees the condensation freezes what it does, it creates a layer of ice on your outdoor heat pump unit like this one. So clearly something is wrong with this as it's not even kicking into defrost modes. Most air conditioners are in are designed with a defrost mode. And what that means is, you see, heat pumps are expected to become icy during the wintertime. So they have this defrost function. And when the defrost control board detects conditions for ice forming, what it does is it acts, activates that reversing valve I was talking about. And what the reversing valve does, it reverses the flow of refrigerant during the defrost mode. And what it's doing is it's sending hot refrigerant into the outdoor coil, as it would in cooling mode, causing the coils to th defrost. The hot refrigerant raises the internal temperature of the outdoor unit defrosting the heat pump condenser unit that you're seeing here in this video. So when the defrost mode is operating, your heat pump will actually rely on your auxiliary heat or your heat strips that are also built into the unit to keep your home up to the thermostat's set temperature. So as we're messing around with this, um, we're still getting very little pressure. We decided to uh, break out our digital scale This is a bigger unit, so it holds a little more gas than like a typical residential unit. But we've put up to about eight pounds in this unit, and it is still not functioning properly. As you can see here, this yellow hose is connected to um, this container of R22. And we are trying to get the unit to take some of this gas, which, as you can see by my gauges... It's not liking it. I'm thinking about heating up the bottom portion of my uh, container, containing my gas, because sometimes you can actually get it to start flowing a little bit because what happens is the refrigerant wants to go to the coldest location. So if I start applying heat to that green canister, it'll start trying to work its way through and actually trying to get to where the, the ice is. It wants to go to the coldest point. So here what I did was I uh, went down to the truck and I got a torch and trying to be very cautious. As you can see, there are quite a few wires in the area. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to very evenly apply a little bit of heat to this compressor to see if I can get some of this to thaw out so the compressor will actually kick on. Um, Right now, we're not having a whole lot of luck, but everything else seems to be working fine, so we're going to have to get this unit defrosted. For right now, the reversing valve is not performing the way it's supposed to be, meaning pushing hot refrigerant back through these coils, which would cause this to defrost. Um, I don't believe it's the defrost board. Um, a lot of times, people will replace their defrost board thinking that their defrost board is bad, but you really can't troubleshoot that until you get the ice 
off of this unit. You saw earlier in the video just the sides where the condenser coil is. I mean, there's probably two inches or more of thickness of ice on this unit. So it would take a lot of heat. You almost have to get like a big hot fan to blow on this thing for a couple hours to thaw this out. Plus, it was 21 degrees today, so it is cold on top of that. So we got our hands full, but we will figure this one out and get it rolling. So thank you guys for watching. And if this was helping, be sure to give a thumbs up and also like and subscribe to the channel.